Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to be doing a little bit more work on your ear training and specifically an incredible exercise to help you play what you hear. Now, I would recommend if you're going to do ear training that you spend five minutes a day doing this exercise every day, well, like five days a week. I recommend people practice five days a week, not seven. But um, so five days a week, five minutes a day, trying to play songs that you know. Okay, that's the only real requirement. And again, I, I kind of mentioned this in the in the ear training uh, benefits video, but a really good test for you is to try and play Happy Birthday. Okay, if you start with the first finger, in the fifth fret, the third string, the note C, that's a really nice, easy one to start off with because you stay in position. Okay, if you haven't tried it last time when when I suggested in the last video, have a go at it now. Just pause this video, go and grab your guitar, put your first finger in the fifth fret of the third string, and try and play Happy Birthday and see how you got on. So once you've done that, did you go? Uh, Or something like that. That's what mo happens for most people is you kind of get some of it right, particularly that little bit. A lot of people go a bit wonky on that because they're not sure how far to jump. A lot of people try and do it on one string, so they'll go, yeah, I'm doing it. That's fine too. But learning to stay in position seems to be more beneficial. So it's something that I, sometimes you're going to have to move out of position if it's too high or too low. But a good, you know, part of the test would be to try and stay in the same area of the neck. And if you did that, maybe let's try doing exactly the same thing. But you're going to start with your little finger in the tenth fret of the fourth string. Okay, same thing. Happy birthday. It's even starting on the same note. Okay. So see if you can have a go now at doing happy birthday in that position. Okay, so how did you get on with that? It's a lot more difficult, isn't it? Right? There's suddenly a lot of those things are going to be feeling a little bit weird. The where you've always felt like going was is it's kind of obvious under the fingers to go, do, 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 but here and then here, this one as well, because you jump strings, it's a lot easier to kind of go. Oops. Okay, so in that position, it's a lot harder. Okay, now that's not to say that it's any better or worse, it's just different. But knowing how to find those notes in that position is really good as well. What, one of the things that I find when I'm doing it is sometimes playing a tune like that, if it gets difficult, I use embellishments to try and find my way around it. I almost did it a bit at the end there when I did a little slide. When I was I, I, really, I should have, for the exercise, I should have stayed in position, not gone at the end. I should have gone. As soon as you get into putting too many embellishments on things, you'll end up kind of covering up the fact that you weren't doing it right. So even for this, you know, let's take happy birthday, you might... Um, okay, so there's a little... You, you're trying to use these little things, but they're... If you... You might go little slide in because you hit the wrong note into the right note. So it's it's easy to cheat in that kind of environment. So you want to try and keep it as straight as you can. Now, happy birthday might seem like a really easy one, but it's not the easiest one. If you're really struggling with that, you might want to start with uh, Mary had a little lamb or something. then try it in a few different parts of the fingerboard with a different finger. Try and find melodies that you really know well, because if you don't really know the melody in your musical mind, the chances of you being able to express something that you don't really know is very small. Okay, I find it a lot when I'm trying to do harder melodies or solos, like if I'm trying to do it, a melody of a jazz standard is something that I try to do this kind of thing on quite a bit. And as soon as I'm 
working on it, if I don't really, really know the melody properly, I find that I'm, I start guessing through it. And, and, and it's not as productive. It's not right to be able to do that. You know, I, I know that I'm not really doing it how I should be. So keep the melodies really simple and then make sure that they're ones that you know really well and try them in a few different parts of the fretboard because as you probably found with that happy birthday thing, starting with the first finger on the third string, uh, on the fifth fret of the third string is relatively easy compared to starting with little finger on the tenth fret of the fourth string. It makes that what was a fairly simple melody kind of complicated because of the pattern, the way the notes fall under our fingers is a little bit more foreign. So I think it's important to try and move these things around and, and I'm absolutely staggered by the progress I've seen in some students and in my own practice of doing this because I maybe, oh, it was probably 10 years ago now, I started specifically doing melodies that I knew and trying to find them and spe specifically spending time just doing that. And it's, it's not perfect for me by any stretch. I'm not sitting here saying like, I'm amazing and I can do this in, on any song ever because that's definitely, definitely not true, okay? I'm still working on it, but it's improving and I definitely feel like I can express myself better. And when I'm doing particularly simple things or blues things, I can really hear them now. I, can, I, I know that the, the musical melodies or the musical pieces are here somewhere and I'm, and I'm pushing them out the guitar. Not, not that my fingers are wobbling ar around in a way that I've practiced doing over and over, much like a kind of a physical exercise. It it's, it's, it's feels different to that. And it's, it's only through practicing this kind of exercise that I think that you get to that. I, I shouldn't say only. There's, there's possibly or probably other ways of doing it. But this is the, what I found to be really effective for myself. And I, and I suspect that you would too. So uh, what I do is I have a little list of songs that I find simple. And I'm going to put some of them up on the web page there for you. Some nice, easy ones to try out. Definitely kind of nursery rhymes and Christmas carols and stuff like that that are really ones that you know really well that you've probably heard most of your life. If you're more advanced, you can try jazz standards is a nice one. Another one I like to do is to try and do solos that I know really well. So um, any any sort of easy, again, I'm not going to try and do a really fast solo where, where there's like, you know, difficult phrases, things that are physically hard to play because I can't hear fast enough to be able to find those uh, set of the, you know, a fast lick in a new place straight away. Just, uh, you know, maybe there are some guys that can do that, but I, I certainly can't at a, at a high speed. I've got a feeling that the really fast guys learn to hear like a group of notes so that when they're expressing a thing, it's a, it's a kind of a group of notes that they can hear and they know how to execute that group of notes in one thing, but they probably wouldn't be able to like change one note in the middle of it because it's become a like a word kind of thing. Anyway, that's, I'm getting off track a bit. What you should be doing, simple melodies, as much time as you can on the fingerboard in different parts with the same melody. But I just think five minutes a day is a good amount. If you happen to be really enjoying it and you want to do more, there's definitely no harm going to come of it, okay? But five minutes a day is a good amount to kind of force yourself onto. Use a, ti a countdown timer if you're not sure about why countdown timers check uh, are important. Check out the practice, effective practice uh, series on my website because it makes a huge difference. Just, you know, use the countdown timer on your phone and just set it to five minutes and hit go and then just work on those melodies for five minutes and then stop you know so it's a very very effective practice tool um, and it all through the rest of the ear training course that I give you when we start to look at the different intervals if you can still do five minutes just on finding your melodies and then five minutes working on a particular interval I think that's a really 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 good way to be working so hopefully uh, you'll find this exercise effective and help you in your ear training journey and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.